do it again. The UFC, the world leader in MMA. Experience it on FS1. For just the second time, the UFC Octagon touches down in Halifax as the rabid Canadian fans north of the border prepare for a heavyweight showdown between a pair of top ten sluggers. There is half of tomorrow's headliner, Derek the Black Beast Lewis, the slugger from Houston, has taken the division by storm, racking up seven UFC knockouts in just under two years. And the tabloids know him as Ronda Rousey's boyfriend, but UFC fans know Travis Brown as a finisher who was once the division's most promising prospect, facing the absolute best of the best in the UFC. And in the co-main event, three-time NCAA national wrestling finalist Johnny Hendricks makes his middleweight debut against judo Olympian Hector Lombard. The FS1 UFC Fight Night weigh-in show starts now. Today they weigh in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. I am Karen Bryant, alongside a couple of the best fighters on the planet, former WEC and UFC champ Dominic Cruz, former WEC and Strike Force kingpin Gilbert Melendez. We've got Heidi Andral braving the cold for us as well on location. Gilbert, you did mention recently the idea of dropping down to 145 pounds. How's that going? You eating a lot of salad? How's things? Oh, they're horrible. <laughs> yes, I am salad. But uh, I do know I can make the 145-pound weight class now. But until I sign the dotted line and step on the scale and make it, I cannot call myself a 145-pounder. But there's definitely plenty of talent out there that I like to mix it up with. And, Dom, you know, people have talked about you maybe moving up in weight someday. Yeah, I've fought at 45 and 55 in my career. But right now, I think 35 is still working pretty well for me. you got Cody and TJ, who I've fought both of them that are getting ready to compete. As they continue to build their own brand, I think it'll have them be more well-known, which would make a better fight for me. I can go out there and contest either one of those guys who thinks that they're the champ. Okay, can't wait to see both of you guys back in action, but let's talk about the action going down tomorrow night. In Halifax, Dominic, uh, number nine, Travis Brown, facing number eight, the Black Beast, Derek Lewis. Let's start with Derek Lewis. Why, why is it that fans have taken to this man so much? Well, I think the thing about Derek Lewis is it's easy to translate. I mean, the guy goes out there, <laughs> throws heat as hard as he can. He brawls. He calls himself a proclaimed brawler. He yeah. gets that top position, and there's not a lot of people who get that top position and knock you out with ground and pound. Derek Lewis has done it three consecutive times in a row. He is a beast. Well, Travis Brown is the vet in the sport, and he's fought the best of the best himself. You know, he shared the octagon with Fabricio Redoom, Kane Velasquez, and he's knocked out guys like Josh Barnett and Stephen True, so we know he has the power to beat all these guys, but I think what's gonna really stand out in this fight is he's so agile, and his agility will play a big role in this fight. I hope he uses it, keeps his distance, punches, that front kick he landed right there, goes over him, I hope he uses that to the body of Derek Lewis. That could make him successful in this fight. This is a pick em fight, too, right now. Both these guys at a minus 115, so we'll see how it plays out. Gilbert, our co-main event, though, has two heavy hitters there as well. Uh, Southpaw Johnny Hendricks taking on Southpaw Hector Lombard. Yes, two heavy hitters, but also two masters in their grappling department. One is a master in wrestling, and one's a master in judo. It's really interesting if they match up and grapple. It's going to be great. But also, both these guys can sling them. Both are Southpaws, and both have power. Both of these guys have some of the strongest hips in the division. And what I mean by that is when you try to shoot on them, they're like running into a wall. They both have power, and they seem to bully anybody that they face. And I think that's what makes this so fun to watch is that it's going to kind of offset each other. They're both bullies, so I think the strength and the power that they both possess is going to offset and force them to use technique that we haven't seen from these guys in some other fights because they could just bully people. I don't think they're going to be able to do that to each other, and it's going to make it interesting and strategic fight to watch. All right, certainly going to be. We are going to have a great weekend of fights. We do need to make things official right now with our ceremonial weigh-ins. We've got Brian Stan making his way to the stage right now, so we are going to send it up to Halifax. Take it away, Brian. Let's hear you, Halifax. The lovely Vanessa Hansen. Senior VP of Talent Relations, Sean Shelby. All right, now, in the first fight of the night on UFC Fight Pass in the middleweight division, Gerald Merchart versus Ryan James. First to the scale, Newfoundland's own Ryan James.
He's on an eight fight win streak. He's also a BJJ black belt. Not a whole lot known about this man. Let's see how it's Official weight, 185 and a half for Ryan James. One thing you will know though is he has opponent, a diploma in computer, Gerald computer programming and is also a web designer. Gerald Mershar, 25 and eight, trains at the very well-known striking school with Duke Rufus in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. But don't let this guy fool you. This guy can grapple. If you saw his last fight, he was able to transition from the back to a sick, for slick anaconda choke. Got to spar with the champ, Tyrone Woodley, for this fight. Felder was also there and Sage Northcutt. Big 85ers. Should be fun. All right, FS1 prelims next. Kicking it off in the middleweight division. Jack the Hammer Marshall versus Tiaga Mejeta Santos. Tiago Santos is a member of the Brazilian Special Forces, an army paratrooper to be exact. He grew up in a pretty poor and violent neighborhood in Rio de Janeiro and said it was only once he started doing Muay Thai that he really found himself. Official weight, 186 for Tiago Santos. And his opponent, Jack the Hammer Marshman. Jack Marshman, 21 and five, has one win in the UFC, but he's on a seven fight win streak. If you saw his first fight in the UFC, this guy has a great left hook, putting his opponent, Magnus Sittenblad, on the canvas in the second round and TKOing him. He says he's a boxer wait, grappler. That's my kind of style. Jack Next up in the bantamweight division, Montreal's own Eamon Zahabi versus Hedgenaldo Vieira. Reginaldo Vieira was Team Nogueira on Tough Brazil number four. He fights out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Eight first round finishes with 10 submission wins. I mean, this is a lethal guy. Says that his strength and his leader in his life would be his father. That would be his hero. And this is a guy who's trying to state his facts, state what he is Official at 135 pounds. 136 for Reginaldo Vieira. Let's see how he does and tonight. And his opponent out of Montreal. Eamon Zahabi. Eamon Zahabi is the younger brother of the esteemed TriStar coach for us, Zahabi. Eamon makes his UFC debut here in Halifax, and he said he is a self-proclaimed bookworm. Books are his distraction on Fight Week. This week's choice is how to get filthy rich in rising Asia. He can add 50 grand to his wallet if he throws down for Fight of the Night or something like that. That's right. Easy way to make some cash. <clears throat> Next up in the strawweight division, Carla Esparza taking on Random Marcos. First to the scale, Ontario's own Random Marcos. So of course we know that Randa and Carla Esparza were contestants, Gilbert, on your season of The Ultimate Fighter 20, and Randa does say that she was a little bit hesitant actually about accepting this fight with Carla, the former champion, but she figured, you know what, you gotta take every opportunity you can. If you remember though, these two women did have Official some beef. 116 for Randa Marcos. Back in the day on the show because Randa was fighting Felice Herrick, Carla's best friend. That's a history behind this fight. Yeah, it was really interesting being in the house with these Carla ladies, but you know what, this is a very good match for right here. Both outstanding grapplers. Carla Esparza has been at 123 pounds for the past three weeks, and because of that, she said she kind of had to rein herself in, make sure she didn't overtrain. But the perk, she got cheat days every week, including this past Sunday, where she had In-N-Out Burger, chili cheese fries, and an ice cream sandwich. Official weight, 116 for the former champion, Carla Esparza. So Carla is a little bit upset. She's not able to use the Metallica song she usually uses for walkout. There were some legal things that she said had nothing to do uh, with the UFC. But Harvester of Sorrows is usually her Metallica song. She will not be able to walk out for that tomorrow. So we'll be hearing something new for her. In our featured bout on the FS1 prelims, in the welterweight division, Montreal's Nordine Taleb versus Santiago Ponzinibbio. Ponzinibbio. 
Santiago Ponce de Nibio out of La Plata, Argentina. Like most international fighters seem to be training at ATT. This guy's an aggressive guy. He's game, man. I, I got a chance to see him fight Court McGee, who's a very talented fighter, and he actually stopped him. Since then, I've been keeping my eye out on Ponce de Nibio. This guy's a talented fighter. You just like saying his name. <laughs> I do like saying his name. Ponce de Nibio. Look at him, he's in shape. Yeah, he is. And when he's out there, he's bouncing around, his cardio is great. He's kind of that full package fighter. He can take it there, or he can be elusive. And his opponent out of Montreal, Nordine Taleb. Nordine Taleb is an extreme sports enthusiast. He actually used to race Sidus, did so in the European Nationals back when he was in his early 20s. He loves motocross, motorcycles, had many of them, but actually sold the bikes because he did not want to jeopardize his MMA career. Dominic, were you talking about riding a motorcycle earlier? No, no riding motorcycles. My grandma called those murder cycles. Stay off those things. <laughs> an awesome fight, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the desk in Los Angeles. The FS1 main card will start weighing in next. We are going to start with a lightweight bout between Paul Felder and Alessandro Ricci. Dominic, why don't you tell us about the durable Canadian Ricci? Yeah, Ricci, there's not a lot known about him. He's had one really tough fight uh, in this UFC, in these UFC matchups, but more than anything, he started training when he was 16 years old, so he's been doing this a very long time. Uh, after high school, he went to Thailand to train, fight, and study Muay Thai. He considers that trip to Thailand his degree. Since then, he's opened his, his own gym, and Angelo Reyes has been his head coach. So he's made some changes, says these things should help him in this upcoming fight, and he's always very Official excited to be out here. 156 for Alessandro Ricci. He's also a crew at his and local his gym, opponent, so he, he's got that Paul Muay Thai experience. Felder. Uh, Paul Felder, training with Duke Rufus, has 15 professional fights, is 12 and 3, but seven of those fights are in the UFC, so he's very experienced. I remember his fight with Danny Castillo when he did that crazy elbow to finish him, so he's a dynamic striker, a versatile striker, actually. Also had fight of the night with Edson Barboza. Both these guys are strikers. I'm excited to watch this fight because they're both going to stand and trade, I believe. Who knows? It's mixed martial arts. <laughs> Felder is the favorite in this one at a minus 375 to a plus 285 for Next up in the women's bantamweight division, Sarah McMahon versus Gina Mazzani. Gina Mazzani took this fight on just 16 days notice, missed weight, weighed in at 139 and a half pounds. Sarah McMahon did agree to take the fight. Now I spoke to Gina's brother, Dave. He told me they did everything they could to cut weight. She just stopped sweating. Official weight, 139.5 for Gina Sometimes Mazzani. making weight is a no, weight. not making weight is a no-no, but with the short notice yeah. fight, you know, Sarah McMahon was able to work with her and All right, it's okay. Next. The you gotta stay ready so you don't have to get ready. The world. That's right, Sarah good point. McMahon. Well, Sarah McMahon, we know, has fought for the title, was unsuccessful against Ronda Rousey, but she's put two wins together, Jessica I and Alexis Davis. She was, as Heidi mentioned, scheduled to fight somebody else. It was going to be Liz Carmouche, but she is fighting uh, on 16 days notice now, a different opponent. By the way, if you want to see something kind of hilarious, for Sarah I can't remember if it was on Elias's or Sarah's Instagram, but Elias Theodoro was teaching her how to do her hair, which is uh, quite hilarious. I like fighters helping fighters. Yeah, I, I think I caught that clip. It's interesting. Yeah. Remember taking that fight on short notice is a big deal for women. Next up, wait so the different. Yes. Division, Toronto's it's own hard to make that way. Elias Theodoro versus Cesar Mutachi Vajeda. Cesar Vajeda says he's always training everything for every opponent he faces. But you better watch out, he says. You're very predictable. One mistake and you're going to be out. He's a Capoeira black belt. He's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. Tough Brazil number one. He was the winner. Official weight, 186 for Mutachi Vajeda. 
And also the very first pick on the Ultimate Fighter Tough Brazil number one by Vitor Belfort. He trains alongside him, and that is one of the guys that he looks to Elias for advice in the fight. Theodoro. Elias Theodoro, 13 on one, trains out of TriStar from Toronto, Canada. Got his career kicked off by winning Tough Nations. This guy's a fun guy to watch. Uh, pushes the pace, and using the wrestling, and, and has some great hair. Like I said, he was teaching Sarah how to do her hair, so. I think we're gonna see a lot of interesting kicks in this fight. You got the Capoeira King, the master, in Fajera, and then you got, you know, this other opponent here, Theodoro, who likes to throw those kicks from the outside, flip kicks, he mixes it up. It's gonna be aggression versus not, and we'll see how this works out. This yeah. is a fun matchup. You can see Caesar getting in. Yeah, Fajera's not interested in the snacks. <laughs> He's not interested in the hair. This is gonna be a great fight. I'm really looking forward to this one. You know, Caesar had stumbled a little bit when he dropped down to 170, but 185 now is the entrance on three fight win streak. Really Next really up well. in the featherweight division, Sam Cecilia versus Halifax's hometown boy, Gavin Tucker. Gavin Tucker left Newfoundland to actually pursue jazz here in Nova Scotia. His music career, though, took the back seat to his MMA career. He makes his UFC debut right here in Halifax. He's actually a vegan, and he thinks his diet is the reason he can train longer. Gotta feel good to get you used to 145 oh. for Gavin Tucker! Yeah, absolutely. How cool the bandage is, is crucial. It can really, really bring up your energy and bar when the fight starts. Sam Cecilia! Sam Cecilia was uh, on the Ultimate Fighter number 15. He was actually part of my team. This is a guy I know very well. I used to call him the Italian brawny man because of the, you know, the way that he throws heat and he's got that beard like the guy in the front of the paper towels. It just, I used to tell him that he loved it. He ate it up. 144 for Sam Cecilia. He's, he's also teammates with Michael Chiesa and bantamweight contender Juliana Pena. Yeah. So he's got good teammates, he's got a good camp he trains with, and he's got three KOs in under 30 seconds. This guy has power. For sure, there's Chiesa with him right now filming everything. Sam Page, they call yeah. him. Next up, the got a lot of names. Of the awesome. In the middleweight division, Johnny Big Rig Hendricks versus Hector Lombard. Hector Lombard, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, also a judo Olympian in the year 2000 from Cuba. 22 knockouts in his record. Had a job as security and construction before he started in 2004. For Hector Lombard. I mean, imagine running into that yeah. guy at the door. Man, I don't know. Like, I'm good. With the well, man dolls back in the day. trying to get in anywhere. Yeah, no, you can't have the door, bro. Hendrix. Here comes former. UFC Walter Weight champion Johnny Hendricks and two time NCAA division champion Johnny Hendricks. Again, look how happy he is at 185,000 made weight. 185 and a half. And how about Hector Lombard has a career in construction? How's he going to do with the big rig? Oh! oh that was a bad one. Okay, I'll stop. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a closer look at the two men competing in tomorrow night's main event. To look past a man like me is a, is a huge mistake, and I'm going to show him why. It yeah, only is going to take one punch. I believe if I could just land it just one time, Lord, just let me land it one time, and, you know, it'll be over with quick. This next fight, for me, is huge. This fight is everything to me. This fight is, is definitely my Super Bowl fight to get me started back on the road where I belong, and that's the road to the title. Travis Brown was one of the most exciting and one of the most promising fighters in the UFC's heavyweight division, but he has had some downs. Travis Brown understands that his back is up against the wall. Derek Lewis, on the other hand, is coming off of a five-fight win streak. He has looked absolutely outstanding. He would love to continue that momentum and take out Travis Brown and establish himself as one of the clear prospects in the UFC's heavyweight division. I'm really flying under the radar right now. And if I get through Travis, you know, which I know that I can get through him, then the whole world gonna know my name and, and hopefully I get that title shot soon. Down goes Gonzaga, he's out! The Black Beast! 
for Travis Brown, this is an opportunity to get back to the Travis Brown of old. The Travis Brown with the outstanding footwork that we saw against Stefan Struve, with the devastating knockout power that we saw against Brendan Schaub, with the outstanding takedown defense and knockout elbows that we saw against Gabriel Gonzaga and Josh Barnett. He's got to look out for these elbows! Those are nasty! He is the key for me to win this fight is to knock Derek Lewis out. You gotta stop him, you gotta make a statement. I'm a brawler, so you know, I'm not gonna go out there with the, the prettiest kicks and prettiest punches. You know, I'm going in there trying to knock your head out, swing and bang it. Hope you've had a good in camp. So I'm coming for you. First to the scale, the ninth ranked heavyweight in the world, Travis Hopper Brown. Here comes Travis Hopper Brown, a veteran in the sport, sharing the octagon. With the two time, with two times with Fabricio Werdum, with the champ, and also with Cain Velasquez, so he's a very experienced fighter. I like how cool and collected he looked right now. I'll tell you what, Derek Lewis has been coming at him, getting personal with him, but I like that he's cool and focused and collected. And you'll see this time, he's got Ricky Lundell and, and Ray Seppo. The eight ranked heavyweight in the, the world, Derek, Derek the Black Beast Lewis. Derek Lewis trains with Bob Perez at Four Ounce Fight Club. Owns seven first round finishes. That is nothing to sleep on, obviously. Calls himself a brawler with lots of heart. 262 for the Black Beast! And there's something about him, guys, right? That you, you, you gotta love Derek Lewis. You can't not like this guy. I always say it's interesting to know people's jobs before they start fighting. He was a triple-A landscaper. Like, you're on the side of the road and you give, uh, you know, old Derek Lewis a call and he comes and Hooks your car up. You better not start any beef with that guy. All right, guy ladies either. and gentlemen, I'm here with Travis Brown. Travis, obviously a very important fight to you, but Derek has made some things personal about this for you. Ah, oh, man. It, I mean, we're going to go in there and fight tomorrow night. Everything's going to be settled tomorrow. Let's go. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm here with Derek Lewis. Derek, second main event in a row. What do you have to prove tomorrow night? See, I ain't got nothing to prove, you know. I'm just going out there, take care of my family, my kids, making sure I bring back food on the table for them. That's there you have it, folks. Travis Brown taking on Derek Lewis. Thank you guys so much. We will see you tomorrow night. Sunday, February 19th, the UFC returns with a massive main event as Travis Brown faces Derek Lewis in a matchup of top 10 heavyweights with explosive knockout power. A finish could happen on both sides at any moment. Plus, former Olympian Hector Lombard welcomes former UFC champion Johnny Hendricks.